Okay, let's see if Jellyfish will let me do this at work. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at something like this. I've got a device that is very artificial. Right? It's got an ellipse like this. Um, it's going to push a little bead. And I want something to just be going here at a constant speed V so that the so that I can do something with that bead. So it's very artificial because I just want to do the same thing that you've got to do in your homework, right? Um, so let's see, what do I want to do with this? I want to find at some position Z uh, what the uh, Y component of the velocity is. So I know what the X component of the velocity is. I want to find the Y component. And I know this distance from the start of the ellipse over here, this Z. Um, I know stuff about the ellipse as well, right? I mean, it's got this um, semi-minor axis A and this, um, or semi-major axis A and semi-minor axis B. So we've got all those things, and I should be able to use that to figure out what the Y component of the velocity is if I know what the X component is as it wanders around there. Um, let's see. I said that I know about the bead. Um, it's x velocity, right? And I said that was v. I know how far it's gone. Okay, and that was z. And I know um, some stuff about the ellipse. And that was the semi-major and semi-minor axes. Uh, A and B. And I want to find the y component of the velocity. Find uh, vy, y component. of the velocity, vy as a function of distance traveled, okay? Um, so what I'm going to need to know about this is basically stuff like where this thing is on the ellipse. So I'm going to, I've got that sort of half ellipse over there, I want a full ellipse over here. I'm going to use this full ellipse to tell me things. So. If I have a bead here, uh, the x component of its position from the um, center of this guy will be here. That means that z is this thing here. Remember, this length here is a. Um, that's going to give us something we need later on. Later on, we're going to need to know that um, z plus x equals a. So we're going to need to know that later on. I'll put that in the equations part. y here is how far up this bead has gone, and maybe or maybe we won't need to know about that b, but that's going to go in our representation. Represent Geometry is a pretty good place for representation if you don't have a free body diagram. Um, our concept should be kinematics. This is just a kinematics problem. We don't really care about where the what the um, what is causing the motion. We don't care about the forces or anything like that. So it's probably kinematics, and the equation we care about is v equals uh, dx dt in whatever form that ends up being when we have all of our different equ equations going on, all our different um, all our different components because we're doing two dimensional stuff. Okay, so what do we need to know? We need to know this Vy. What would the definition of Vy be? Well, it's just based on that, so uh, we need to find something about the definition of Vy. That tells us that Vy is equal to dy dt, right? It's in this y, y direction that we have our Vy. So uh, yeah, we want our Vy up this way for our bead. So we've got one equation there. That's the thing we want to know. Now we need to know what is this y thing anyway. Well, we could figure out the y thing 
from the um, ellipse. So we know what the equation for an ellipse is, right? It's a squared, or excuse me, it's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. It's been that for many, many years. I, I assume most of you have taken geometry. And so let's see what's next. Um, we know we wanted to find this guy. We know these two, the semi-major and semi-minor axes. We don't know this x, right? We don't know this number. We do know this number. We're allowed to know that number because we're, because we're um, finding a function in terms of it. So let's uh, replace x, all right, with z so that um, we can use uh, z is equal to um, x plus a, right? Because x is actually going to be negative here in, in this position here. So maybe I said the wrong thing earlier. Okay, so that's what we have now. Um, but we've got all of the things that we need. So all we have to do is actually figure out what to do with them. Okay, so like I did in class and like you probably um, are thinking now, the best way to do this is just to differentiate the ellipse. So we're going to start with 2. And we're going to take the derivative of 2, ddt of this whole thing, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. We just FOIL that through, so we have d dt, um, x squared over a squared, so x squared over a squared there, plus d dt, y squared over b squared, equals d dt of the constant 1. Um, let's see. Now, what do we do? This is 0 at the end. Uh, a is a constant, b is a constant, those come out. So we have the time derivative of x. So remember, we're doing basically a chain rule. So we have 1 over a squared right? times the time derivative of x squared, which is 2x, times the time derivative of x. Now, we don't need to go any farther because we have a name for this, right? We have a name for this guy. This is guy is um, dx dt. So we have a name for that guy. We don't have to go any farther. And similarly, when we take the same um, derivative here, 1 over b squared, 2y um, dy dt, this is just the thing we're looking for. This is our vy. Um, maybe not our vy of z yet, but it's going to be because we've got everything worked out and this is all equal to zero. So when we take a look at this, we can say, okay, well, we know that this guy's v. We know that this guy's vy. We want to find the vy, so I put vy on one side. Uh, then I multiply by b squared over 2y. That means I have b over a squared here. And then I have 2's canceling out. And then I have x over y times the substitution of this thing, which is just v. And there's probably a minus sign there just for the heck of it. All right, so we've got just about everything, except we don't really know why. We have to um, substitute in for y, right? So. That means we have to figure out what, or well, actually we don't know the x either, we have to substitute in for the x, but there will be an x in our equation for y because we have to come down here with this guy. Um, but I am going to go ahead and if I can find the right way to do this, um, ink, erase all, I will just rewrite that equation um, if I can remember what it was that I was writing um, here. So I said Vy, come on, Vy is equal to minus V over A squared, I believe, 
times x over y times v. So I need to find this y, but I just needed some extra room, so I cleared the screen. So the y, um, let's see, first, if I was looking for y, maybe what I'd do is I'd multiply everything by b squared, and I'd subtract the x squared over a as well. So I'd end up with y squared is equal to b squared minus uh, b over a squared times x squared, right? Um, at this point, it does me no harm just to make that substitution. I've got a b squared minus b over a squared times, um, how, how did I say that? Uh, x is equal to a minus z, or z minus a. Okay, z minus a, because x is negative squared. So then we can substitute that into this guy, and we can substitute this same um, expression here into him. And we end up with vy is equal to minus b over a squared uh, times uh, z minus a over the square root of b squared minus b over a squared times z minus a squared. And um, that's all times that initial v. So I can put my v there. I can also, if I'm sneaky, take uh, this b minus a, one of these b minus a's and send them down there, b over a's and send them down here, uh, cancel some stuff out. So I have just a b over a squared times z minus a over the square root of a squared minus z minus a squared times v. And that's my answer, all right? Um, just everything in terms of that z that I want and constants that I know, all right? So that looks good. Let's see, I, I changed my mind, I want that negative, right? Um, let's see what our answer actually has. We've got this B. What is B? B is up here. So, so far it's looking okay. A is down here. A is there. So we've got A. Um, let's see what else. We've got this Z. Z is here. So Z is okay. And we've done A and we've done Z. We've got the V left over and V is over here as well. So we don't have any universal constants, and but we've got all of the things in this equation are givens. So we've um, basically completed all of that work. Pretty good on this. So let's just see what we want for dimensions. Uh, this is a little more difficult. So if we look at the dimensions of this whole thing, we've got the dimensions of b over a times z minus a over the square root of a squared minus z minus a squared <clears throat> times v. And we want that to end up being a velocity. So we want in the end to have l t to the minus one, l times t to the minus one. And so we have a bunch of things. So we have b over a already. Um, that's a length over a length, so that's one. We're okay with that. Got rid of that. Um, the z and the a both have the same units, so, we're, so we can just use one of them. Let's use z on top. Um, then z and a there have the same units. It's position and position, so they're okay. This is dimensionally homogeneous. We can just use one of them just like a. a has the same units of a, so we have z over a, but again, those are position and position. Those are one. Then we have the units of v. And so the v is velocity, right, which is what we wanted, l t to the minus 1. So we have l t to the minus 1 there. Check. We're doing good. So whatever it is I derived, it has the right units, and it only uses symbols from here. That doesn't mean it's right. But it does mean that there's a good chance that it's right. I haven't done anything tremendously bad with my algebra or with my planning. So it's okay to at least that point. 
All right, so looks pretty good. Um, again, this shows you a little bit of implicit differentiation and how, how all this works. Remember, you're doing the chain rule, right? So that uh, we do the derivative of this thing, and when we do after we do the derivative of that thing, um, we just do the derivative of each thing in turn, right? Because we're doing um, this ddt and x is a function of time because it's moving, that thing does not go away, but it is something we had a definition for, right? We had a definition for it um, <clears throat> as just the velocity. And here again, we have the same thing. This doesn't go away because y is changing with time. So we just have a rate here. That's our vy and that's our v, right? And that's what gives us this nice, uh, pretty equation that tells us everything we need to know about the velocity of that bead. Again, it's a little bit artificial, but when we go through it, we can see all of the things that we need to do to do some of those sort of less artificial things that you see in your homework. All right? So uh, let me... Um, uh, let, how does it decide which one of these it wants to do? I don't know, but let me just leave this up for a second or two before I actually close it. And um, you can take a peek at it or at least pause and see what's going on. Thanks.